Previously, we have set up our kinetic servo motors to communicate with the Compact Logix. We've got them enabled, and you're ready to do some motion now. Before we do, though, let's talk about a few limits that we ought to set. It's like I say on your car, just because you can run 8,000 RPM doesn't mean you should run 8,000 RPM. So yeah, if we just want to do a little bit of graphical representation here, we don't need to run that fast. Let's open up our left axis in our trainer group and go to the motion planner section. And mainly we're going to talk about this maximum speed and our maximum excel and deceleration. Now, this is not an exercise in planning motion properly. We mainly want to put some limits on here so that we can see what's happening and we can learn about them. Rock Automation has a great motion planner tool that will help you figure out these values exactly. But for this one, realistically, if I'm sitting here trying to look at this pointer, probably about two revolutions a second or about 120 rpms all i want to run so right here where it says the maximum speed we're going to put two positions per unit and that's going to give us two revolutions per unit and then yeah right now we have like a gazillion units per second squared of acceleration and just to knock that down a little bit we're just going to set that at 100 again these are just arbitrary numbers I am not using any calculations for these. And we'll leave the maximum acceleration jerk and maximum deceleration jerk where they're at. And then let's go to the right axis and we'll do the exact same thing. Go to the motion planner. We're going to put it 100 in. We're going to put 2 in for our speed and 100 for acceleration and deceleration. Now let's talk about why we would want to think about these values at least a little bit. Because when we have speed... And one of my early applications, they needed a certain amount of speed, and I did. I put a servo on it, and it was capable of 3,000 RPM. Never thought about that. You know, there's an output shaft there with some bearings. Yeah, they were only capable of 1,800 RPM. So really, you've got to look throughout your motion control system and determine the maximum speed of the system, not just your motor. And then we have the acceleration and deceleration. Well, just because we can go zero to 60 in a half a second doesn't mean that the shaft or the coupling or anything else can. So we got to start thinking about that when we're calculating this. In our case, we really want it where we can see what's going on. And after that, we're going to do a basic jog instruction first. And yes, just like in the last video, we're going to talk through what I see you ask questions about, and then we can talk through how to fix it. In the program we've been working on, we're going to bring down a new rung. And we're going to go over to our motion move category. And we're going to bring down that MAJ motion axis jog. And then in front of that, just so we can learn about it, we're going to start off with a go look for one examine on. And this will be jog left axis. And in our axis, we're going to select our left axis. And for our motion control, I'm going to call this one my left servo MAJ. And then we have a direction here. And actually, I want this where we can change direction. So I'm going to put this as my left servo jog direction. And we'll right-click it, New, Create. And I want to be able to adjust the speed. So I'm going to call this my left servo jog speed. And when we create this one, the default data type is going to be a dent. I want to make that a real. That way we can talk about that a little bit. Then for our speed units, let's start with units per second. And we have an acceleration. And for this exercise, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to put 100 in. And then our units will just be percent of max. And then for our D cell, we're going to put 100 in. And then we're going to put percent of Mac. All right, and then we have a profile. We have trapezoidal and S-curve. And we're not going to get in the weeds of this, but trapezoidal means go directly linear up, then we'll be steady, and then directly down. An S-curve kind of gives it, a, it's a little easier on the mechanical part because it's going to make an S. It's going to it's going to start off a little slower, ramp high, and it's going to ease it instead of it going bam, bam, bam. It'll kind of just smooth it out. In this case, let's just select the trapezoidal. We have Excel jerk, we're gonna put 100 on it. And decel jerk, we're gonna put 100 on it. And then we have our units and we're gonna put percent of maximum. And then we have a merge speed. For what we're doing, the merge isn't gonna matter. So we're gonna hit disable. So our merge speed, we can just put a zero on. And then in our case, lock position will not matter either. So we'll put a zero on that. 
and none for our direction. And then I forgot to create left axis jog when I typed it in, so we'll right click left axis jog. Also, I forgot to create left servo <laughs> jog. So we'll right click it. It's going to be the right type. We're just going to click create and we'll put that in there. And this is exactly where we get to. We're so excited. We want to jog our thing. So first thing we got to do is we got to enable the servo. And if we go over here and we right click our servo on that we already did and we toggle it, then I'm going to get an error again. And if we hit our left axis, go down, it says start inhibited because we need that axis enable. Remember the last video, we added it to our local colon one colon O data as output four, but we didn't do anything with it. Let me show you something we can do to make an easy place to toggle this is we're going to copy that and I'm just going to bring a new rung down and I'm going to put a go look for a one in and we're going to actually look at local colon one colon O dot data dot four and then we're going to put an output energize in local colon one colon O dot data dot four. And this way, this is looking for a one if it doesn't have a one, it'll be false, and this will go right a zero. If it does have a one, it'll be true, and it'll go right a one. So this just gives us an easy place in our program to toggle. And a lot of times when I'm actually developing something like this, I will put these in here, because now I know I need to do something with this, because in the end, we will make all this interlocked and make it where it all works together. So I'm just going to right click local colon one colon o dot data dot four and we're going to toggle the bit. We're not going to force. We just want to toggle the bit. That's going to turn on our servo enable. And now we toggle off our MSO. We toggle it right back on and we look good. And if I turn the servo a little bit, I can feel some resistance on it. So I know we're ready to go. On the jog, there's two things we did leave to set up. We have our jog direction and we have our jog speed. And just to start off with, I'm going to put one in for our jog speed. And zero is going to turn the servo one direction. One would turn it the other. So we're going to start off with the zero in. And I'm going to right click the jog left axis. And I'm going to select toggle bit. It begins to rotate and we can see one 1,000. Yes, yeah, so that is about one revolution per second. Now, here's the next stumbling block is most people now think that we're going to right click jog left axis and we're going to toggle the bit again. And that should have turned it off. But yeah, we're still rotating because it is a command to start jogging. It doesn't say anything about stopping when it's false. So we will need to issue a stop command. On. And to do that, we're going to bring down a new rung. If I can put it directly below this left axis jog. And we're going to go over to our motion move instructions. And we're going to bring down an MAS, motion axis stop instruction. Now, I could put something here just to have this thing shut off with another bit, but all right, it's somehow associated with this left jog axis right here. I'd like to be able to turn it on. Eventually, this will be a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for a zero in this. So we'll go over to our favorites tab and bring down a go look for a zero, examine all. And for my axis, I am going to select my left axis. And for my motion control, I'm going to select left axis MAS. We'll right click it, new, create. And then we have a stop type here, and it could be all. In this case, we are stopping a jog. So we're going to stop jogs, and we're going to use the jog to do it. And we have an arrow here, and we still need to hit it, because even though it's hidden, we still have to enter this stuff. So first, we have change the cell. We're not going to change it. So then our cell rate actually doesn't really matter since we're not changing it. So I'm just going to throw 100 in and my D cell units, I'm going to throw percent of max. Then chain to jerk, we're going to put no. And since we have no, it doesn't matter, but we still have to put something in. So we're going to put 100 and percent. Since we have already have this toggled off, the moment I hit this finalize button, our motion's going to stop. All right now let's toggle it back on. And so a zero is running as we're looking at the front of the trainer clockwise. Now you got to remember it's actually from the server. This actually would be counterclockwise. But yeah, so it's running clockwise. And if I toggle it off, it stops. And then we have this direction here. Let's put a one in the direction bit. And now when we toggle it on, it goes counterclockwise. So now let's take this and see if we can start working a little bit of logic out with our switches. First things first, let's make an HOA because we know we're going to have an automatic. We want to do some position control. I know everybody wants to do that. But we need this manual mode also. So let's make switch four and HOA. 
And let's make it where we switch, switch four, well, one to the right, eventually we'll get to, we'll do positioning. But if we switch it to the left, let's make it where the green button will jog it counterclockwise and the yellow button will jog it clockwise. And to do this, we're mainly going to be modifying these two rungs. So we have our left axis jog. Well, now that's going to be if switch four is in the left position. And then if either the green button or the yellow button is pressed. But if we press one button, we're going to need to set the direction to a one. And the other button, it'll be to a zero. So first counterclockwise is actually a one. We'll have to remember that. But let's go ahead and start a rung at it here. And let's bring down a go look for a one. And let's go and find local colon one colon I because that's going to be our embedded discrete IO. And then we want data and then hit our drop down. And we are going to want input eight. That's going to be switch four to the left. And we're going to use that for hand. So let's go ahead and modify the description even. And let's call this hand. Then we have the green button or the yellow button. So I'm simply going to bring another good looking for our one examine on down. We'll put a branch around it and bring another one down into this lower branch. So this will be our green button. So that'll be local colon one colon I data zero. And then the other one will be local colon one colon I data one. Now we're going to use a feature that can actually be a blessing and a curse in Studio 5000 is most people think that the output instructions have to go on the right side of the wrong. But we can actually put output instructions in the middle here and it'll continue to pass through. So green is supposed to be counterclockwise and we know counterclockwise is a value of one in this left servo jog direct. So along with this, we are going to bring down a move instruction, which is on the move logic tab and we are going to move a value of one into this left servo jog direction instead of typing all that i can simply click the tag drag it over and drop it right on this green box and then we're actually going to right click that move and copy it because we want a copy of it in this lower branch also and this will be a value of zero so this replaces this left axis jog bit that we had earlier now we still have to stop to deal with but let's talk about how we can deal with that without putting a lot of code in is we're going to go ahead and just delete this out of this rung and finalize this edit right here and switch four is in the left position and all i'm simply going to do is hit the green button and this is an exercise i do a lot in our training class is a lot of times if you want to do the opposite of what you have here you just kind of figure out what actually changes over here when a rung becomes true so i'm going to press the green button and when it does we get the e in and the d in now let off of it the e in goes false so since we want the servo to stop whenever we let off the button or we make that rung false, we can actually use the EN of that motion axis jog instruction to do our stop command. So we'll start a rung edit on our motion axis stop command. And this left servo MAJ instruction, that's what actually has all these bits in it. So if we click it, we can drag it down here. We're gonna get a red X because we gotta go further into our arrows. So if we click there, we're gonna hit the arrow. And we want this EN right here. And we'll finalize that. And now if we press our green button. That would enable it. And we let off of it. And that stops it. Now if I press my yellow, it goes the other way. So now we have where we can jog forward and reverse. Next, you're ready to learn about positioning, which is, I know, what you've wanted to do the whole time. So I've created this playlist right here with servo positioning videos and some scaling instructions that we're going to need.